Hi, good afternoon. Um, we're looking today quickly at a UNI-T uh, mini clamp meter. Um, I bought this primarily uh, for seeing how much current was being drawn by, by a fuel pump in my Land Rover Defender. Um, but it has, has, it's got its other uses also. Um, we'll take it out of the box, have a look at what you get with, with it. Which uh, isn't too bad really. Get obviously a box is little, what well, tacky plastic case, but it's functional. It does keep the meter clean. There's a meter. You get some cables with it. And pop those out. A uh, little instruction booklet, and also a test certificate. book is, uh, I say it's a book, it's a piece of paper with two sides and both sides have English writing which is promising. So we'll put that to one side for a minute. The leads that come with the device are okay, not marvellous. I'm not an engineer that's going to work down to microvolts um, or need to measure something to six decimal points. I largely work on cars and 24 volt equipment. So this is fine for that. The resolution is going to be great. Uh, a couple of sharp-ish probes on there. Uh, they got shrouds on them, so um, you're not going to short them out. You can do that if you're on a printer circuit board and you, you're quite close, bang, bang, and uh, your circuit's gone. But these just pop on. They're okay for the money. Uh, let's put those to one side for a moment. That's the meter, depending on how you read it. Some of it's upside down, some of it's not. It's a, a mini clamp meter. Clamp meter meaning you put the wire of the device you're measuring in, in here, just one wire, not two together. Um, you've got 17 mil space and they tell me here to get the cable through. And it'll measure the current the particular device is drawing. And that's in uh, either AC or DC, depending on the device under measurement. Uh, which is handy. It'll save you breaking the cable. Uh, if you had a conventional meter, if you wanted to measure uh, current to a device, you would have to uh, break into the cable, disconnect it from one end to the power source. Um, but with this, you don't. You just clip it over one of the cables feeding the device and it'll give you a fairly accurate reading. Uh, as I say, I've used it on my truck. Very good for that. I didn't have to chop into any wires. The uh, fuel pump that I wanted to measure claimed it should measure about 8.7 amps. That's what this device told me it was uh, running. And in one of my previous videos, earlier videos, uh, I wanted to measure the current consumption of uh, a compressor. Uh, and this said, yep, yeah, 43 amps. And that was about right. That's what I was expecting. So that, that, that's quite good. Uh, if we just whip the back off, it runs on three AAA batteries. Uh, some of these devices you can get a little bit tacky. This is better. The screw on the back, for instance, is captive, so you're not going to drop that in the dark. Uh, as I say, there's your two AA, uh, AAA battery, sorry. Just pop those out. But here, where the back screw's on, there's an insert, a brass insert. So if you do have to change the batteries, as you will do over a period of time, uh, you're not going to th uh, strip the thread out of the plastic. It's nicely set into a brass insert. So to me, that's a little bit of quality. Um, something to be sought after if you could. Let's just pop that back on. I'm not going to open the meter before we get too far into the video. I'm not going to strip the meter out to show you what's inside. Uh, this is a meter I use, a uh, meter I want to keep using. So I don't want to take the chance of breaking it or invalidating the warranty. But if we flick him on, got the display come up. Um, I'd prefer if it went over to DC to start with, uh, but it automatically defaults to AC, uh, both for the voltage and the current readings. Uh, I have another similar meter and that also defaults to AC, so I guess that's a standard. Uh, easy enough to swap over uh, on here. Take that a little bit closer. Uh, you can see there's writing in blue, the blue button, press that, it'll take you to the symbol below the white writing, which is AC. Uh, in this case on there, it's DC, so 
single press like that were over to um, DC voltage. So um, that, that, it, dead easy, easy to swap around. You've got a hold function also. Uh, we'll show you that when I do a few tests. If you hold that down for a cup, there you go. Hold comes up, let go of that. Press again, sorry. Get the light to come on. It is backlit. Now, well, that's coming over. Got a fairly good uh, angle of view there. Start losing it when you tip it forward. But uh, that's one thing is a little bit annoying. The light doesn't stay on for too long. It's about 10 seconds, then it's off. But press it again, you take the hold function off. There you go. Hold function comes on and stays on um, with just a moment momentarily push of the button. If you push and hold, you'll get the light to come on. There you go. So uh, we'll set a few little tests up just to see what the accuracy is like on it. Um, it's not just purely a clamp meter, of course. The, 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 the jaws here are used solely for that, um, apart from one function that I'll also show you. But in the bottom of the device, you've got two uh, standard 4 mil banana sockets. That's where the cables go in, um, so you can run off and measure your DC or AC voltage. And it does have an ohms function, a diode tester, and a continuity function. So um, I'll set up a few little tests we can show you on here just to check the accuracy against my other non-calibrated meters. So we get an indication of uh, how good or bad it is. So we'll go over to that now. There's a couple other settings I want to show you on here. If we move the control knob to the second position, if we bring this up into shot, you can see what I'm talking about. Just here, you've got a diode, uh, continuity, capacitor, and ohm symbol. Now we can access those three settings in blue um, using the blue control knob. By default, when you first power it on, it comes up in ohms. Press it again, goes to continuity, and that's what I want to show you now. Uh, it's got the original Uni T leads in the meter. Touch them together. Hopefully, you can hear that blip. There's a, it's making a bleeping noise. Um, but when you tap them together quickly, you're lucky to get a response. Now, you might initially think that's the meter not responding quick enough, but it's not. It's the cables. If we pop that set of cables out, dispense with those, and bring in another pair of cables, not expensive ones, and not the ones from the Fluke. Um, I would normally associate Fluke with good quality cables. Now, th these aren't from the Fluke. This is just another set of uh, cables I hap happen to have together. Um, now, listen to the difference. Straight away. So, those cables from the Uni T, um, I suspect either this is coated with gunk from the factory, um, maybe there's some varnish being placed on them for whatever reason. But that is slow in the response time down. But these, magic, meaning the little old meter here responds very, very quickly um, to you buzzing the circuit out. The last thing you want to do if you buzz in the circuit out for open circuits is have to wait a couple of seconds for the probes to make contact and the meter settle. Um, with a decent set, really you wanted hardened tips that are gold plated and you'll have the ultimate then. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's one thing to bear in mind with the cables. It, it could be a probe that might be letting you down. But going back to the meter, one more press. Go to diode test. Uh, I've got diode to hand on, so we're not going to run one of those up, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, one more press, we're over to capacitors uh, or capacitance. Just going to measure this 470 ohm capacitor. Hopefully it'll come somewhere close. Just let it charge up. A little bit over, says 505 microfarad. Uh, it was expecting 470. So that's reading a tad high. Let's see. Um, let me get another one out. Let's see what we got here. We have 2200 microfarad. So let's just see if that reads high also. Or if that reads somewhere near. Here we go, just let it charge up. Two 
2.22 so that's closer that's closer really on the higher range but it does read capacitors maybe not as accurately as, as I would like um, but in my instance I, I keep referring to what I my function is and what I'll be using it for that's going to be perfectly good if I want to measure capacitors um, in motors uh, start capacitors etc this will probably get me out of trouble so um, yeah all right okay on to other tests okay that's um, I've got a, a DC power supply off shot here um, output in 10 volts a fluke meter is fairly new not calibrated but new from the factory tells me as you can see 10.02 volts likewise on um, the UNIT uh, exactly the same voltage uh, so from the accuracy point of view of the DC doesn't look too bad um, we'll do a quick DC current check um, I can't check the fluke on current I'll have another meter we'll bring over just to see what the accuracy is on there it's only 100 millivolts I'm measuring um, I've not got any real loads I'm going to chuck on um, so we're not checking the higher level uh, currents on here um, I picked the UNIT E because it had a 2 amp current range which was more useful for me on, on the truck on the Defender uh, having a 12 volt supply um, I'm more likely going to use a 2 amp range than which is on the UNIT D the minimum current range is 20 amps um, I particularly went for this as I've got the lower current reading which is more useful for other things for me so we'll set this up for current and um, we'll just compare the accuracy again right this is a setup I'm going to use for the current test got a 10 volt power supply over here that you can't see uh, set to 10 volts meter reading that output from the power supply bang on 10 volts this meter here is set to current and what that is doing is measuring the current flowing through a 100 ohm power resistor 100 ohms 10 volts that gives me a 100 milliamp current flowing through this cable so we're going to fire up the UNIT by default if I put it to the current range it goes to AC now I don't want to measure AC I'm measuring DC so press the blue button once that sets to DC amps and what it also says I should zero it zero the meter reading before I put a put it on test there we go zero now we'll clamp it on the cable of the power resistor we'll have a look what we're measuring 96 97 milliamps that's pretty close to the meter here so um, as I said before I, I don't work to microamps I, I more likely work to tens of milliamps so from the accuracy point of view I'm fairly happy that these two meters are reading very very similar results um, I'll just crack up the power supply a little bit see if we can get it up to 60 volts and to see if the currents correspond Let me just swap the ranges there. Let's carry on up to 60. There we go. Um, pretty accurate again. We're drawing um, 600 milliamps through the power resistor. Both meters are corresponding to very, very similar results. So accuracy wise on the UNIT, assuming this one's reading correct, uh, meter from Maplin some years ago uh, yeah the, 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 the accuracy it appears to be good so we'll do um, a resistor test now just clear this out the way and uh, we'll measure this 100 ohm resistor and just to see if that kind of measures 100 ohms it's uh, plus or minus 5% and we'll compare it to the fluke which is a lot lot better ohmage range than um, the white gold from Maplin so we'll just set up the resistance test All right, here's the setup there. There's only three resistors I'm measuring. There is on the UNIT the 100 ohm, say 99.4, a 1k ohm resistor, 998, 998 ohms, and a 1 meg resistor, 
reading 1.044, which is fairly close in my book. We'll go to the fluke now. In reverse order, the 1 meg is reading 1.039, 1 K, where we had 998, we're reading 998, exactly the same. And the 100 ohm, 993. So, yeah, I'm happy enough with the readouts on that for the accuracies between the meters. Um, I'll show you, I have some lamps plugged in at the moment. Just uh, take that out the way, pull the cables out, and move that. Here's a mains cable feeding my LED lamps. It's live at the minute, it is insulated, so I shouldn't be dying on screen. Uh, I'm going to set that to the 2 amp range on AC. This is where the beauty is, you don't have to cut the cables to measure the current. Simply open the clamp, pop the cable in, close it. Make sure it's fully closed here or you're going to get a misreading. And that's telling me I'm drawing 0.174 an amp, which I've calculated is about correct with the four LED uh, spotlights I'm using. So that's very handy. Um, and the accuracy is pretty, pretty spot on. The other thing I wanted to show you, you go to the NCV, no connection voltage, flip that all the way around, EF for electric field. Now you bring this closer to a live circuit, you get an indication on how close you are. You hold it like that in the light. If I bring the cable up close to the tip there, you can see I've got a light at the top here flashing away. Um, and depending on how uh, high the voltage is, will depend on how many. Uh, dashes or segments appear in the display so if you are checking the cable out for live or being live then um, it's all built into this tool the closer proximity the closer or the, the more often it is the bleed patch here. it is a little bit how you're doing but depending on the proximity of the cable and the voltage depends on how many segments on the display will light up and how rapid the LED will flash and bleep at you. But that could get you out of trouble if you're looking for live cable in amongst um, a bundle of others. I didn't buy it for that, I only bought it for the current um, function really for DC but that's another added bonus for it. Uh, but overall um, for the money, this was about £35. I have had it about 12 months, I must say. Um, but when I bought it, it was about £35. It stays in the truck, um, in this little pouch. Seems to do the job when I needed it and called upon it. it uh, it's there for me. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it, apart from if you're looking for one with a 2 amp range, go for the Unity E. That's the UT. 210E. The UT210D uh, does have a frequency range which I didn't need but the current range only starts at 20 amps. Now I'm going to be more likely working in the region of say 1 to 10 amps so the resolution of this was better for me in that instance. So uh, yeah there you go that's the uh, UNI-T. Um, if, if that's what uh, you're looking for tickles your fancy certainly saves cropping the cable and putting it traditionally in series with a, a current reading meter. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching.